your claim is that your claim is that our foreign policy would have to be entirely aligned with the EU if we stay. Yes, yes, because when they did that Iran deal, people don't notice. I only watch the BBC and ITV now. Probably if you forensically examined it on the net, you would look more closely. But when they were signing that Iran deal about four years ago. There was about seven people there, but only about four countries. The U.S. were there. Mm. Britain was there for some reason. Iran was there. And guess who else was there? The EU. EU. I think France were probably there as well, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, I think you're spot on because they're on the Security Council. They, they are concerned about arms proliferation. But who was there but the EU in the, in the guise of Fre, Fre, uh, Federica Mogherini? But your real beef then with the EU is is increasing political alignment and integration and, and, and an increasingly joint foreign policy, and you feel uncomfortable with that, right? Yes, I fear, I fear, this, I fear the sort of fascism that your last caller was spelling out by saying there's some dirty rich men who are going to make a packet. As we know, people who trade all around the world make packets on, on all sorts of things, varying from, from war to peace. There's always going to be someone making money that you can point the finger at. And so, it's going to be, it's, it's leading to fascism, that's all. It, it's, it's you just don't think a that's going a, a bit far? Well, uh, we said it in the 90s. People said that, I've only heard it mentioned once, Fortress Europe. In the 90s, the concept of Fortress Europe came up. That it, it, you had to go inside the fortress because somehow you need to be defended uh, from the outside. But the trouble is, once you're inside the fortress, it's, it's, it's a very frightening thing to be kicked out of the fortress. And that's the fear they play on. So just to be absolutely crystal clear, we've got Max in Lewisham who thinks that Brexit is a far-right movement, and we've got Harry in Portsmouth who thinks that the EU is fascist. Yeah, eventually a fascist organisation, yeah. In what way is it fascist, or would it be fascist? Well, it's going to, it's going to, well, it, it, it's a, it may have dressings on top and you may have the Labour saying, uh, oh, we, uh, we like some of the benefits because they were trying to put that in with the May deal they were originally talking about when they were trying to get her to talk to the Labour Party. Workers' rights, they, yeah. Yeah. One minute Labour, when they're in power, say all the benefits are our laws and as soon as they're out of power and a referendum comes along, they're saying, look, all these lovely maternity laws, this, that and the other, these social laws, they're not down to us at all, Labour. They're all down to the EU, so, so you must stay in the EU. It, it, it's the way they always change their position to, to but, suit well, the situation. How does that lead us to fascism? Because, because um, it, it, the, uh, people like the CBI, all these, um, all these big businesses, the sort of big businesses... The Federation that of previous... British Industry you're now suggesting is fascist or has fascist no, no, tendencies? No, 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 no. No. A fascism can come about by the control of democracy through through large corporate corporate means, which is exactly what your last caller Max was talking about. Except he got the wrong end of the stick. The fascism, as I understand it, is basically imposing your will through force. Are you suggesting that the EU? Well, that's would... military. Fo- that's that's mili- that's militarism. Stalinism could be the same thing, couldn't it? No, I'm thinking of South American dictatorship. Yeah, well, indeed, it's characterised by dictatorial power. Fascism. Yeah, but they run by corporate. They run by corporate business. They get that's how they get into power. And the same thing happens there. They they don't they don't claim to be undemocratic in Europe, but they still ex- exhibit strong lobbying tendencies. So that regulations such as the hard hat mark hmm. can be imposed. Now, whether you like them or not, it's neither here nor there. I like the hard hat regulation. It's perfectly sensible, and it would have come in. It came as you mentioned last night. It would have come under under the the British Standards Institute of '92 because a lot of people don't wouldn't wouldn't remember it. But I happened to do a short college course in '91, and the phrase on the lecturer's lips that he kept saying all the time was um, referencing the um, oh, and I've forgotten the phrase now, but referencing the single market because it was the year that it would be fully operational. And you know what? About ten or fifteen years, oh, good ten years later, I heard some comment. And it was referring really to these 90% of businesses that don't trade with Europe. And they said it was like talking about the Y2K millennium bug. It hadn't existed for them. 
this 1991, the 1991 and all that was the phrase. So, hang on, um, just to go back to fascism for a second, because hard hats and, and legislation around hard hats is fascinating, but maybe only up to a point. Verhofstadt, yeah. he's, he's one of these would-be fascists, is he? The Guy Verhofstadt? He, he's yeah, they, he's they, a they, European they, Parliament and chief Brexit chat. And he's saying, that, as I've said earlier, that Europe's far right aren't patriots, they're Putin's puppets. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice swivel, isn't it? I, I hear that quite a bit. People pick up the 1984 book for some reason. But Junker it must Tusk, be... Jean-Claude Juncker is still president of the European Commission for another few days, and our friend Tusk, who's the, the, the council chief, they, they, you, you seriously think they've got fascist tendencies? I, I'm not saying they, they, they are fascist or have fascist tendencies. It's the organisation they promote. That's what it can I'm lead to. I'm not sure to. you could have fascism without fascists. Well, people in Germany voted for fascism. People in Italy voted for fasci fascism, yeah, but, but they, they weren't they, necessarily they were fa fascists. Well, there was Mussolini and there was Hitler in those cases. Who are these? Who are the fascists around which these fascist institutions are gathering? Well, no, they were the ideologues. You could call you could call uh, people like Verhofstadt an ideologue because he, he he's doesn't he's mean he's made a fascist though. I mean, I'm not a fan no, of no. Verhofstadt, but he's not a fascist. He may not be. But it's, that's what it would lead to. The, f the fact is, Fort Fortress Europe is about is about encompassing greater. Uh, well, people spotted it now because he actually came out with the word empire, didn't he? It's a substitute for Fortress Europe. He actually, because he was with the Liberals, I don't know where his tongue got extra loose because he's always got a loose tongue in Europe, according to Farage. Anyway, he mentioned the word empire, and what have we had the last sort of decades? The British Empire must end, other empires fall, the Russian Empire, all empires are, are destined to fall in the end because of whatever inefficiencies that, that they, they exhibit. What he, said in May, what he said in May this year, Harry, was the world of tomorrow will be dominated by empires like China, India, the US and Russia. The status quo isn't enough, he said. We need a strong united Europe. Strong united Europe few... to protect our way of living. He said it a few weeks ago, didn't he? I don't know what the May reference is. He's probably said used the word before, but it hasn't been publicised. He said it a few weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, as the European Parliament reopened, he got up and made a speech, and that was what was publicised on the media. Mm. I can't find that right here, but he certainly alluded to empires elsewhere, didn't he? Yeah, well, he would do, because that's the sort of speeches he makes, which uh, virtually have never, ever been broadcast in the UK. We're, we're, in a, we're in an outfit of which we know very little. The BBC, being a national broadcaster, which you did used to work for, should have had this, one of their duties, just like the old Nationwide programme, which I think you barely know of, that, you know, you, you had programmes from around, around Europe. And I'm not talking about language difficulty, I'm saying that there should have been more, more, more knowledge of Europe, not the sort of knowledge you get by di diving into a swimming pool on holiday. It looks like a pool anywhere in the world. Harry, it's lovely to have you on. Harry in Portsmouth making the case for a fascist Europe. And we have Max in Lewisham, who felt that Brexit was a fascist movement or a far-right movement. So we've got claim and counterclaim. Where do you stand?